Hi guys, Stradionato here with another video. This time, since I got a lot of questions on how I use TrendSpider to trade the strat, I thought I'd make a video on how I have set up TrendSpider for my usage. This is not a video that will show you how to trade the strat. This is just a video on how to I use it with TrendSpider. If you want to learn more about the strat, there are lots of great resources out there, lots of great people out there that teach it a lot better than me. I will post some links to learn about the strat uh, in the video description. Rob from Smith in the Black is the creator of the strat. He created the strategy. He posts videos on his YouTube channel regularly and teaches the strat as well. So uh, if you're a more uh, slow learner like I, uh, then I recommend you Sarah Stratzniber in her YouTube channel. She teaches spot on strat setups, how to trade different signals. She also does some live streams. Watch her videos to learn more about the strat. And if you're a more a reading person or a reading kind of person, there is a great link from Rob in the Black on New Trader U where he describes every setup that's possible and what to do with the setups, how they react and broad informations and all the things. So these are some of the resources I used to learn the strat. Feel free to watch the videos or read this blog post to learn more about it. But this video is how I use TrendSpider to again for different setups for my Sunday swing lists. As you may know, I have a blog and also do some videos once a week where I share my Sunday swing ideas for the next week or maybe also into the next month or longer based swings with three to maybe six weeks expiration. And since I got a lot of questions on how to find those setups and how to chart them and how to use it with TrendSpider, I thought I'd make a video about TrendSpider. So my setup, I use different workspaces, but my main charting workspace for scanning for swings is this one, a daily, a weekly, a monthly, and a four hour or sometimes a one hour chart open. So I always look at multiple time frames, uh, at least for the swings. These are my setups, daily, weekly, monthly, four hour. You can use the four charts set up here in the TrendSpider dialog. On the right side, I have the sidebar open where I have a watch list section, a scanner or a script section. They call it script section and I have my alerts in the bottom here. Make sure if you have any questions on how to use some of these tools in TrendSpider, they have a great TrendSpider University page. If you are a subscriber to TrendSpider, feel free to or make sure to use them because they describe in, in lots of detail on how to use everything, set everything up. So this is not also not part of this video. In the top right is my watch list with around 30 to 40 tickers. Normally my scanners that I use that I come later to here in this video, I scan through th this watch list and find setups that I maybe swing on my for my Sunday swing list. In the middle section, I have a smart checklist widget enabled and this smart checklist here uses the full time frame continuity scanner. So it is a default scanner from TrendSpider that shows the, the full time frame continuity of a stock you're currently watching. So monthly, weekly, daily, and they use the 65 minute chart. You can also use the one hour chart for swings. Monthly, weekly, and daily is be looking for. So for example, if we look at Apple, they are green on the month. Month is green. They are red on the week, red on the day, and they are also red on the 65, which is I don't have open, but if you switch to a different time frame, you see last candle was also red. On the bottom, I have my alerts. When I create new alerts, they appear here to have an overview of which alerts I have set up. This is pretty useful, at least for me. You can, of course, use different widgets here as well, like news or seasonality scans or something that TrendSpider provides. You have to find your, your own setup here. The indicators I use, as you might see, try to keep my charts pretty clean. Just the strut lines I use, some smaller indicators I have enabled and the strut candle numbering is an indicator as well, a TrendSpider. So only the, the green ones here, the other ones are disabled and you can customize this for every chart or for every time frame on one of the chart setups here. 
So I use the destruct candles. As you see, this is the numbering of the candle types. I use on the daily, I use an indicator that is called gap snake. So it shows me gap ups or gap downs. If a setup like this one here, back on, when was this? September 20th, September 21st, September 21st, uh, when a gap happened at open for Apple. I use this only on the, on the daily. Then I have an indicator to see the earnings. I have this only set up for the daily and the weekly chart. And you have to make sure to see the earnings here that you have other data on and have earnings checked here. And drawings is of course my strut drawings that I try to find some setups. So to my lines that I use, I normally use blue lines for my daily high and lows. You don't see it here because it's below the weekly setups. It's this why it's disappearing here. On the weeklies, As you see, I use the orange or teal colored line for the last week since we are now, today is Saturday. So normally we look back on maybe AMD. I use always the, the last candle, which is active to, to spot a possible breakout. If it's an inside week, we have an, a, a setup in fours, like a two up in fours, like here at the monthly AMD, you see the last month's high was 128.08 and we are in the current month, November, which is still active. The, there is a two up and it's in force because we are trading above the 128.08 on Apple. For example, there's also a two up in force on the monthly because we're trading above 153.16. Monthly screen, as I showed you before on the full time frame continuity scanner. But we are red on the week. And if we draw this back to like my setup was on Friday, you will see that we had a two up, but it got rejected at 165.70 which is the high of the last week, the Thanksgiving week. And we came all the way down to 156.81, where we closed on Friday, the short Friday, which you also see here. I see all the different kind of timeframes in, in one chart, if I like. I can maximize this and see only the daily in, in this case and see... Uh, let me check the weekly high of last week's high is not visible. Uh, let, I, it's not displayed on time frame below. I enable this and now you, you see that on the lower time frames for the different charts and not vice versa. But you can also, if you like, show the daily candles on the higher time frames as well. If you select here all time frames, then it will be visible on all the time frames. I have set up some custom annot annotations at Transpider calls it custom annotations for this lines so I don't have to color each line when I draw it. I have here on the left side my custom annotations. Some are default from Transpider and I have I think the weekly, monthly, daily, the target scan which is a possible if I draw it to the possible target. It's a green one with a small flag and the price as well. And you do this one time. You use a normal horizontal ray, set it up, double click it, and then you can customize it like you want and can save as, it as a custom annotation. And it will appear here on this sidebar on the left side. This makes it much faster for me to chart some setups when I have found some possible trades into the next week or in the next month. So this was a quick overview how I chart and what I use colored. If you, if you see any charts from me, You now have an idea why I use different colors and what these colors mean. Daily blue, weekly orange, purple is monthly, and then I have green for my targets and I have blue for the broad information setups. To the scanners, how I find tickers I like to trade for my Sunday swing ideas. I have a list of different strut scanners that I created. Preferred ones for the swing ideas are always the daily or the monthly and weekly scanners that I use. So for example, if you want to look the full time frame continuity to the upside scanners, there maybe isn't one because we had a big dip to the downside on Friday. But if I look on the FTFC downside, then we have a list of different scanners and then I can have a look at Zoom, for example. So we see it's red on the month, red on the week, red on the day, and red on the 65 minute chart. And it's also presented, if you look at here, the four hour chart as well. You see you see my drawings from the last time I charted it. Maybe it was a put play, because the last target I draw was the 100. 
8318, which was nearly reached. Uh, at least the 200 psychological level was touched on November 23rd. So if I find a ticker that I want to trade into the next week or into as a swing trade and is time frame continuity to the downside, this is often a bearish trade. I can click on this above list and add it to my swing ideas list. And if I have found four to six tickers from different scanners, I start to chart them. As you see, I have a zoom in this list now. Spy QQQ and the IWM is always on on all of my list because when I trade during the day, I like to have a quick overview of what the market does and SPY, the Qs and IWM are normally good indicators what the market does and in which direction it trades. So I have this on all my watch lists. If you want to remove Zoom from this watch list, you can either click here and click on this symbol again, then it will be removed. Or you can click the three dots here, edit this list and remove it as well as put some other tickers in this list and it will after save it will appear in this list so then i chart all the setups i like maybe there's some filtering here as well like i thought it was a good setup and after charting it i don't like it i won't trade it also the beauty of the strat is i can chart all of them and i won't trade them until a specific trigger i used to set up hits so if a trigger doesn't hit we want to trade this setup. This is one of the greatest things of this strat that I like because I don't get in too early or get faked out by uh, different technical indicators like MACD or RSI or whatever you want to use. I trade only if some of the triggers got a breakout like if the price of AMD on Wednesday moves above 152.66 in this example, then I get in my trade, not before. I can, of course, go to a lower time frame, like the four hour time frame, and can you see this is this blue line here is exactly this candle here. So if you want to go into a trade earlier, then try to find a different time frame, like the one hour time frame. I'm on the Central European time. So that's why it shows 15.30 here, market open. So you could get in here on the one hour time frame or wait for an, a higher time frame to get into a, in the, at a later time. But normally on the swing trades, I wait for a daily breakout that happened before I get in because normally we try to spot or get a trigger on the weekly or monthly which happened here, for example, on AMD, when AMD got above 128.08, we want to get in because this is a signal that a two up is in force and we will trade this to the upside. On the contracts I use to get in is normally, as I said, three to four weeks expiration. Maybe I go out six weeks expiration as well and I try to catch 104. And I think above 128. 08, I try to get in to this trade and buy some calls that are not too expensive, maybe reachable in the specific time. So to give you an example that happened already that I posted on my Sunday swing list as well is AMD where I, if you open this chart back from October 17th, I tried to spot the breakout above 112.83 with a 1 to 2 bullish continuation to enter in it. And I tried to get a 120 contract as you might see on this list with six weeks expiration was a great trade. So of course the FDFC scanner is not the only one. As you see that I have lots of different scanners that I use during a weekly or a weekend scan. I can use this scanner, open it, and will immediately see that from my watch list, Intel, XLE, and Oracle is currently in an inside month. And I can have a look at it and see if, if, I, if it's worth a trade or if it's a bad setup. This looks currently very bearish on Intel. So a possible 312 to the downside could be happen if we open in December below. Then the next candle, the one is the 4812. Currently we are inside this outside candle here. So this is why this is still a one because it looks like it is the same. But if you look closer, I haven't reached the low of October yet. So these are my, my different scanners I use mostly on the weekly and monthly scanners where I try to spot some setups. I can share these scanners with you. Transpider offers an, a sharing option that I can send you all these scanners 
I have available and customized and set up already, so you don't have to. This is a list of my, my scanners I have available, and I will send you the page of this scanner list if you signed up using my Transpider referral link. And after confirmation, when I've verified your email address, I can send you this list and don't have to create all the different scanners for yourself. If you click one of the links, you can use this link and this scanner directly on your account like I used it to after you have imported it. So it appears on this scanner list here as well. So after I have charted all my possible setups into the next week, I see different triggers on this list. If AMD triggers the 142.86 to the downside because week is currently down, but month is green, so keep this in mind. That's just an example. If we trigger 142.86, to the downside, I can set up a conditional order at my broker to buy a put, maybe with a target of 135 or 140, so that you are in the money and the order will be executed automatically if we dip below 142.86. So this is a very relaxed way to enter into trades, but of course you could enter into the trades manually if AMD triggers to the upside or the, to the downside depends on this is just an example. So if you found this useful and you are not a Transpider subscriber yet, you can use the link in the description to sign up to Transpider. They still offer a Black Friday sale currently for the next two days, but if you watch this video, this might be already too late. A question I got often about the different plans they offer for if you only use the scanners or want to use the scanners and for for the charting, the cheapest plan, the premium plan is all you need to use the scanners, find your setups, chart on the different timeframes and you don't need to have one of the higher priced plans. I'm on the Elite plan because it gives me some backtesting and other possibilities but you don't need this if you want to use just the scanner. So if you found this video helpful, uh, not a subscriber of my channel yet, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Twitter at Stratinator and keep an eye on my Sunday Swing Ideas blog posts I have on my Stratinator microblog. I will post a link to all these resources below in the description here in this video. I hope this was useful to you and it clarified some questions I get all the time regarding the colors of my candles and the indicators I use and hope you found it helpful. Take care.